Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to play with this little wooden toy. You can see we have these different color beads. They make nice sounds. I'm going to talk about getting to school in a rural area as a child. That's what I dealt with. Um, I lived in a very spread out county where, um, I mentioned before when I was growing up, we uh, lived out on this dirt road. We were surrounded by forest. And it was all owned by a lumber company. We owned seven acres of property on this road. The rest of it was owned by a lumber company. And we had no neighbors at all. There were no other houses on the entire road until I was about 13. Um, so it was very quiet, very peaceful. But, you know, the county I grew up in was very spread out. The, the houses and everything were really spread out. Much lower population density then as compared to now. And um, we only had, let me think, we only had a few, I think we had, we had two high schools and I think we had five elementary schools and maybe three, two or three middle schools. I can't remember. And, um, so the bus routes were kind of crazy. <laughs> the bus routes were very long and you would have to get on the bus and ride and ride. I mean, just like some of the bus routes were more than two hours long. <laughs> the, actually, the bus route that I was on was over two hours for, for me, for where, where I lived. It was over two hours away. That applied to middle school and high school. But when I was in elementary school, I went to a very small, very new private school. A private school that was run by a, um, a church. And it had just started. It was very new. They only had a few students. And um, they did not provide transportation to school. The parents had to bring the kids to school. Now this, this school was nowhere near our home and it was nowhere near either of my parents' jobs. My, my parents worked, um, my dad actually worked in a different town and my mom uh, was closer, but still not really close to the school. So, um, I know it was an inconvenience to take me there, but they did and I really appreciated it. That they were trying to do a good thing. Um, my brother went to public school for elementary school um, because when he started elementary school, the the private school did not exist. It was um, founded after he began elementary school. And when they started the private school, they only they started one year before I began attending the school and they started with what they called K-4 which is like the year before kindergarten. I know it's called um, pre-K in some areas but the school called it K-4 and they also had a K-3 program which was like preschool. Um, I think I did go to pre uh, K-3 for a little while which was only part-time it was just a few hours a day just to get the kids kind of acclimated to the environment. So they started, when I started K-3, I think the first year of the actual school was K-4. They started with one group of kids in K-4. It was very small. <laughs> and um, I stayed in the school for K-3, K-4. K-5, which is kindergarten, they called it K-5, uh, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. And depending on my parents' schedules, they, um, 
often would take turns dropping me off and picking me up. And my brother could have taken the bus to school, but there was a problem throughout our time in public school. And even when I began public school in middle school, sixth grade, there was an issue where, um, just based on where we lived and what the bus route looked like, we would have had to get on the bus around 5.45 a.m. School started at 7.45 a.m. for elementary school, middle school, and high school. But we would have had to been out there waiting at the bus stop at 5.45 a.m. And my parents didn't want to do that. They didn't, first of all, they didn't want to have, I think the main thing was they didn't want to have to get up that early. <laughs> I don't blame them. I wouldn't either. And they didn't want us standing out there in the dark, especially in the winter time when it seems like it's dark all the time anyway. So my brother had never rode the bus in elementary school. So um, my dad... I think for most of the time, my dad would take him to school in the mornings on his way to work. <clears throat> that way we could sleep later. We didn't have to get up at like 5 o'clock in the morning or anything. Or my parents didn't to have him out at the bus stop at 5.45. Um, and then he would have to ride the bus. He would have been on the bus for about an hour and 45 minutes. And um, they didn't want to do that either. So, I think throughout most of my brother's time in elementary school, I think our dad took him to school. I honestly don't really remember, although I do remember for most of that time, my mother did take me to school in the mornings. And then in the afternoons, they had an after-school program for kids whose parents worked or just wanted them to go to an after-school program. They did have that for the private school I attended. And I think my brother's elementary school also... No, it didn't. I just remembered this. Um, his school did not have an after-school program, but the private school did obtain a bus, and they would pick up kids from the elementary school and take them to the private school after-school program if they were enrolled in it. So for a while there, my brother and I were in the same after-school program, but not for a long time because age-wise, we're about four years apart. So it w we only overlapped there for a short period of time before he went to middle school. And he didn't ride the bus home in the afternoons from the elementary school because he was young, obviously, and my parents were at work and there would be no one at home. And my parents didn't feel it was wise to send him home to an empty house when he was so small. In fact, now, um, where I live, it is actually not allowed. You cannot have your elementary school child ride the bus home if there's not an adult waiting to meet them at the bus stop. They, they won't let you do that. You have to have an adult there to meet you at the bus stop when they get off the bus now. So my kids have never done that because I'm at work when they get they would get off the bus. Um, my mom, when when my brother was born, uh, quit her job. She stayed home with him, and then she stayed home with me until I was about six, I think. It was when I, she was working part time for a little while when I was in kindergarten. <clears throat> Um, but when I was six years old, she got a full-time job. And she started her job around the time I started first grade. <laughs> I remember. I remember that. So the after-school program was a, a really good thing for my family growing up. So that my brother and I had somewhere to go after school. And then usually, usually our mom would pick us up. Sometimes our dad would pick us up, but it was usually mom pick us up. And, um, I still remember she had this one long brown cardigan. It was like this long knit sweater that she would wear. And she had that thing for years and years. I don't know whatever happened to it, but 
she wore that thing for years and I can remember being at the after school program and seeing her standing in the doorway with her brown cardigan on. It had this design on it. It was sort of an, like an Aztec design in a beige color. It was like beige and burnt orange. That was the coolest cardigan. It was kind of long. It was really cool. And then she had it forever. So, um, <clears throat> so up until my brother started middle school in the sixth grade, I know for some people you have junior high, which is seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. But where I grew up, we had middle school, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And then you had high school, which was 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. So when my brother started middle school, um, they still had to take him to school every day. And um, my mom would usually take him when he started middle school. Um, we, I don't remember us riding together. Because when he started middle school, I was still in elementary school. And the schools were not close at all. They were nowhere near each other. <laughs> so, um, my dad a lot of times would take me to, what do I see? My dad would take my brother to school and my mom would take me to school. And it still wasn't really convenient for either of them, but they, you know, they made it work. You know, when you're, when you're a parent, that's what you do. You, you just make it work. You figure it out. It doesn't last forever, and then before you know it, it's it's all over. Um, when he started middle school, so my dad would take him to school in the mornings, and then he would ride the bus home after school. They felt at that time he was old enough to go home and be by himself. It was only actually for a little bit, because he got out of school at 2.40, and then he was on the bus every day until about 4.30, so, even though school got out at 2.40, he didn't get home until about 4.30 in the afternoon. He spent that long on the bus because the route was just that, that long. Um, and so, like I said, it was a very spread out, uh, poor rural county and they, you know, they didn't have a lot of buses to go around, so um, they made it work. So, he would get home about 4.30 and then... Um, my dad, I think at that time, was getting off work most days around 4.30. But again, he, like I said, he was working in another town. And um, some days he would pick me up from school, from the after-school program that I attended. Um, sometimes my mom would pick me up. It just depended on, I guess, whatever they <laughs> worked out. And every now and then, they would both think the other one was picking me up. <laughs> and they would nobody would pick me up <laughs> so um, they would have to call my home you know we didn't have cell phones back then so they would just have to call the house and try to get somebody on the phone like are you gonna come get mary <laughs> she's still here and we're getting ready to leave and, like did it not occur to you people that neither of you pick me up <laughs> it's kind of funny it's sad and funny at the same time it's like it, they didn't notice i wasn't home <laughs> that the other person didn't pick me up. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the after-school program was, was pretty cool. Um, it was pretty neat. So, um, the after-school program was actually in this really, really old church building that belonged to that, uh, congregation or whatever. It was their old church. They turned it into an after-school program. So it was this really old building, and we would play outside. They had this big um, playground, and it was on asphalt. There was, there was no mulch, no grass. It was just asphalt and jungle gyms and merry-go-rounds and lots of skint knees. <laughs> we didn't care. Um, so when I, so up through fifth grade, I was being dropped off and picked up every day by somebody, usually my mom. Um, my mom, I think, did most of the driving me to school in the mornings because my dad was taking my brother to school. And neither one of us ever rode the bus in the mornings because even up into middle school and high school, the bus came every morning before 6 a.m. I'm thinking one year, I don't remember if it was middle school, 
the bus came at 5.30 a.m. And both of my parents said, no way. <laughs> That's crazy. But that was the route, and they weren't willing to change it. So um, they had many years of having to drive us. And we were never both in the same school at the same time. <laughs> Because of the age difference and because I went to a private school for elementary school, we were never in the same school at the same time. <laughs> I got to high school right after he graduated. So, um, Even in high school, my mom, let's see, my, when I was in middle school, my dad took me to school just like he did for my brother. And then my mother transitioned over to taking my brother to school when he was in high school. And again... The middle school and the high school are nowhere near each other. They were pretty far apart. I mean, like 15 or 20 miles apart. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, yes, so the county only had two high schools. And I think about that now where I live now. We have, I don't even know how many high schools we have here. We have a bunch, a bunch of high schools. And even though we only had two, there weren't a lot of students in each high school. There really weren't. Because it was, a, you know, a low population county. So my mom, no, no, my dad took me to middle school in the mornings. And that was always kind of fun because um, my dad has always had a pickup truck. And it's usually a stick shift, you know, a manual transmission. So you have to change gears. Well, what we started doing when I was in middle school and riding with him um, he always had a cup of coffee with him in the mornings that he would drink on the way to work. And he would get really frustrated because it was hard to hold a cup of, like a regular cup. It wasn't like a travel mug. It was like a regular coffee cup. It was hard to hold a cup of coffee and steer and change gears at the same time. And he would get really frustrated. So I offered to help. I said, what if I change gears for you? <laughs> So I became like his automatic transmission, and I learned how to, and I learned the shift pattern for the truck that he had at the time. He had, it was his first, the first new vehicle he had ever bought. It was a 1985 Nissan pickup truck, a little, a little pickup truck. And it was a five, I think it was a five speed, or maybe it was four speed, I don't remember, but um, so he would drive, and I would pay attention to when he needed to shift. You know, I would, I learned to shift. It took a little while. You know, I messed up some, but I got the hang of it pretty quickly. And uh, that way he could drive and hold his cup of coffee and not have to worry about it. It was this cool thing that we used to do. And I would do it all the way to school in the mornings. And uh, he always had a motorcycle. He's always had at least one motorcycle. And when I was a kid, like I'm talking eight, nine years old, we would go for drives if, the, if we had a nice day on the weekend. And I would sit in the front and I started driving. I w had an interest in holding on to the handlebars. I learned to change gears. I learned to drive, drive the motorcycle. And he would let me sit up front and drive. It's illegal. It's all get out. Do not do that. <laughs> Um, and if he saw a police officer or somebody, he would just take over and drive. I drove hundreds and hundreds of miles on that, on his motorcycle. He had a Honda motorcycle during that time. And we went all over the state of North Carolina, and I would drive. I, I had lots of experience. I, I, I want to get a motorcycle, but I'm not going to get one now. I want to wait till my kids are older. I, I miss that. It's really cool. I miss, I miss riding a motorcycle. And I don't want to ride in the back. No. I want to, I want my own. I want to ride in the front. Riding in the back is... It's, it's lame. I don't like riding in the back. You, you can't see. It's like you have to turn your head this way or this way. And you can't really see anything. I want to be in the front. So that means I need my own motorcycle. <laughs> That's a little goal I have for when my kids are older. Or out of the house or something like that. I, I wouldn't do it now. I know it's a safety issue, and uh, I want my kids to be older before I do that. Anyway, that's off topic. So I would shift gears in my dad's truck so he could hold his cup of coffee and drink it. And usually he would finish it by the time we got to the middle school. So he could set the cup down and drive, you know. He didn't have to keep holding the cup. He would try to finish it by the time we got there. 
And so then he would just go on to work after he dropped me off at school. Um, and then I started riding the bus home. I had never been on a regular school bus. The bus they had at the private school was a, just a very small school bus. It only hold, held a few kids. It was really little. So they had the big full-size buses at middle school. And I was the last kid off the bus. I was at the very end of the line. And my job in hot weather, we didn't have air conditioners on the bus. I think it had heat, but it, you couldn't really feel it unless you were sitting right up front. Um, my job, before I got off the bus every day in hot weather, was to go around the bus and close all the windows. We would open the windows to try to cool it off in there. And it was my job to close all the windows before the bus driver got to my stop. That was, that was my thing to do. And there was a certain point on the route where I would get up and start doing that just to make sure I had enough time to get them all before we reached my stop. Um, when I first started riding the bus, I didn't know any of the kids on the bus. I was very quiet. I've always been kind of a quiet person. And um, some of them picked on me. Um, I was really glad I got off last so they wouldn't see my house. I was always ashamed and embarrassed by the house I lived in. It was um, not nice at all. <laughs> and I didn't want the other kids to see it. Especially when I saw that their houses were a lot nicer. And it just made me self-conscious. So I was kind of glad I was the last one off. But they would pick on me sometimes because, I guess because I was quiet and they, they didn't know what to make of me. A lot of, the, most of the other kids were not like that on there. They were really loud and rambunctious. And I would sit up front and do my homework. Because I was on the bus from 2.45 until about 4.30 every day. Um, sometimes later, depending on how long it took to get me home. Sometimes it took a little longer. And um, then I got braces when I was in the sixth grade. And the kids picked on me. They would call me train tracks and brace face. And, you know, they would, they would pick on me for my braces and tell me I looked ugly. And I looked like a nerd. And, you know, I didn't like that. But, you know how kids are. But my teeth are much nicer now <laughs> than they were. I had, my teeth were pretty messed up. I looked like Bugs Bunny. I had buck tooth teeth and a big gap and my teeth were not lined up right. And so I'm really glad I was able to have braces, but the kids on the bus made my life pretty, pretty uncomfortable for a while. I had braces for about a year and a half, but the good thing was I got them off before I got to high school. So that was good. I think I got them off the summer before eighth grade, I think. And the orthodontist was a long way from our house, too. The orthodontist was about 45 minutes from our house. And my brother had to get braces. So my mom decided that we would both just have braces at the same time so she wouldn't have to drive up there and back twice. You know, it were two rounds of braces for two kids. So we both had braces at the same time. So I would ride the bus home in middle school. And my brother was there, and then he got his license at 16, his driver's license, so he didn't have to ride the bus anymore. My parents gave him a car. I'm not bitter at all about that. They had a um, an antique, like a vintage um, Mercedes. It was a Mercedes sedan. It was a 60s model Mercedes. It's a really neat car, and they gave it to my brother. Now... I had to get a job and buy my own car, but that's a story for another day. So, so my brother was usually at home when I got home from school, um, and we had we had a Commodore 64, and most of the time, and we had an Atari, and most of the time he was either playing with the Atari or he was messing with the Commodore 64. He was a bit of a whiz kid. He, um, at one point I remember, I swore not to ever tell anybody, but he went in somehow and reprogrammed something in that Commodore 64 so that when you booted it up, a bunch of cuss words would flash on the screen. <laughs> it 
It was hilarious. I don't know what in the world. He said, you have to swear you're never going to tell anybody I did that. And he went in and fixed it back before our parents <laughs> saw it. And so, um, so usually he was playing around with the Commodore or the Atari. And he, you know, he basically ignored me. So, but I would do all my homework on the bus. So when I got home, I wouldn't have to worry about it. And I could go outside. I could go fishing at the pond nearby or whatever I wanted to do. I had a little playhouse that I built out in the woods. And I would go out there sometimes and just sit and read a book or whatever. Um, and then when I got to... So then my brother joined the Navy after he graduated high school. Which shocked everybody because he was... A lot of people thought he was making a mistake. But he went into the nuclear program in the Navy. Um, but so he left home at 18. And, um, let's see, so when I got to high school, my mom took me to school in the morning. She would have to drive way out to the high school, which was really far from where she worked. Um, and then I would ride the bus home from high school until I got my license at 16. And I had been, um, I got a job and worked in a, a little grocery store where they didn't have scanners, so you had to actually key in the price of everything. You would have to look for the little price tag on the item to see how much it was. And usually you would kind of memorize the prices after a while so you wouldn't have to keep looking for them. But I worked there long enough to save up some money, like a down payment on a car. And I worked out a deal with my mom where I, would, I saved up $500 and gave it to her like a down payment. And then she um, financed the car I bought. And I messed up, but it, I learned a very important lesson. Don't ever buy a vehicle because it looks cool. Because <laughs> that's what I did. I bought a Pontiac Fiero. It was a 1984 Fiero. It was the coolest car. I loved that car so much. It was a really neat looking car. A little two-seater. But it was a terrible car. It was an absolute lemon. Never mind the fact that they had a problem with the cars bursting into flames. Mine never did that, but it basically did everything else it could have done to cause me problems. I spent more on repair on that car than I did on the actual car. But I bought it because I thought it was cool. And I would make payments to my mom every month. And I had to keep my grades up. I had to stay out of trouble. If I didn't make my payments and keep my grades up and stay out of trouble, I couldn't drive. But that never happened because I was, I kept my word and did everything I was supposed to. I still think it's wrong that they gave my brother a car and made me work for one, but anyway, no bitterness there. <laughs> I just, I don't get that. My brother never had to have a job. I, I knew I had to get a job. I've worked since the week I turned 16. <laughs> Pretty much non-stop except for the month of November last year. Um, so I had to decide between the Fiero and there was a Mazda 323 that I also looked at and liked and the thing I liked about it was it had a sunroof and I really wanted a car with a sunroof but it was a it was a stick shift and at that point I wasn't super comfortable driving stick shifts. I mean I could do it but I didn't feel totally comfortable with it. And the Fiero was an automatic. So um, I decided to go with the Fiero. And it died on my graduation night. When I graduated high school, it, it died in a parking lot of a, a McDonald's. And it never started again. <laughs> it got me through high school. I told the car, I said, if you will just get me through high school, I won't ask anything else of you. And it literally died on graduation night after my graduation. So um, I had to have it towed back to the house. And I was able to sell it for the amount that I still owed on it, which was good. The body and the interior were in fantastic shape. They were, they were in great shape. And a guy was going to rebuild the engine or something. I don't, I don't know. But So I was able to pay it off. But then I had no vehicle. <laughs> So my freshman year in college, I had no car. 
and I had to try to get rides to come home like for Christmas break and stuff. I had to coordinate and get a ride home or my mom would come get me or whatever, you know. So it was tough. But then uh, the summer after my freshman year of college, I worked, uh, I worked in a factory. I worked in a Black & Decker factory and an Eberready factory and saved up money again for a down payment. And my mom had to co-sign the loan because I was only 18. And that's when I got my first Sentra. <laughs> um, oh, about the 323 also. The thing that was funny about that car was that even after I graduated from college four years later, I graduated at 21. I was three credit hours shy of a double major. I finished that up later on at, at another school. But, um... I would still see that Mazda running around my hometown. It was still running four years after my car, had, after the Fiero had quit running. And I thought, and they were the same price. I thought, why didn't I get the Mazda? I wouldn't have had to buy another car so soon. But it was a very valuable lesson for me and one I have stuck by. Get a dependable vehicle, even if it's not the coolest looking thing, because you need something that's going to get you where you need to go. And it can look cute as a button, but if it's sitting in your driveway and it won't start, that cuteness is not going to get you anywhere. So, go for one that's dependable, not the one that's cute. If you can find one that's cute and dependable, that's cool, but it's kind of hard to do. It's kind of like people, <laughs> like significant others. Um, get, go with the dependable one. You won't, you won't regret it. So when I was in college, after my freshman year, I bought the, my first Nissan Sentra in 1992. It was a red two-door Sentra and it was a five-speed. I had that car for 17 years and put over 330,000 miles on that car and never had a single accident. I was very proud of that. So I drove the Sentra all through the rest of my college career and beyond. So that is the story of my transportation during my school years and my youth, along with this lovely little toy. I think I'm going to make another video with this, because I just love the sound. I'm going to make another video with this, I think where I just, I just play with this and I keep my mouth shut. So that'll be coming up later. Not tonight, but later. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my ramble and this cool little wooden toy. I will see you again really soon. Let me push all these back. Also totally off subject, they're coming out with a movie starring Tom Hanks about Mr. Rogers this Thanksgiving. I just saw the trailer. Really excited to see that. Just thought I'd throw that out there for any Mr. Rogers fans. It looks like it's going to be pretty, pretty good. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you again soon.